Hi, this is Hunter the Honda Mackinen, and this is a little video introduction into this uh, double re-upload of my old Ranking the Soundtrack videos for Sonic the Hedgehog PAL version and Mega Man 3 Mega Drive versions. And if you don't want to watch this introduction, if you just want to skip straight to the actual soundtrack ranks, there's uh, time codes in the video uh, that you can use to do that. But basically, uh, this little intro part here is meant as an explanation for why these videos that were part of my Ranking the Soundtrack series were originally taken down by myself and why subsequently I have now decided to re-upload these two videos. So I sort of already addressed this at the start of my Leisure Suit Larry 6 soundtrack ranking uh, about the reasons for uh, why I took them down. And the reason, the reason that I gave there was that, uh, well, obviously the Ranking the Soundtrack series was inspired by Ken Blakey, aka Aqualung of Aqualung Game Reviews, who started the, his own Ranking the Soundtrack series. And in the past, a long, long time ago, I used to do little top tens of uh, the soundtracks of my uh, favorite video games, where I would list the ten, my ten favorite tunes from each of these, uh, from the soundtracks of various random games that I did. But the thing that I really liked about Aqualung's uh, ranking the soundtrack format, which is why I decided I wanted to do it again. Well, first of all, I just like those when I did those top tens uh, in the past, it was just me playing a little bit of the song uh, and showing the ranking that way. Uh, and so I didn't have any commentary on it. Whereas Ken, uh, what he did with his ranking was that he actually explained the reasoning for why he liked each of the individual songs. And what I also like the fact that it was ranking the entire soundtrack, or at least the almost the entire soundtrack. Now, one other thing that I really liked and what I thought was kind of cool about Ken's uh, soundtrack ranking was the fact that he had actually self-imposed this rule where he only ranked the level themes uh, for the games and not uh, any of the little jingles or opening themes or credits themes, which was kind of an interesting way to go because um, I like when making certain top tens, it's very easy to do it in a kind of... Uh, you know, les en fair way. And to be fair, I don't really, when I do top tens these days, I don't really try so hard to think about the ordering anymore. I used to be a lot more pedantic about that. And really, uh, these days, I only really focus on whether or not I can vocalize a specific reason for any of the rankings. Frankly, all the rankings are a little bit arbitrary these days. And I think I actually give more thought to the presentation of the list more than anything. So anyway, you know, me and Ken have obviously done uh, videos together, the cartoons. I even did a little uh, nod to Ken a couple of years ago with the Adams Family video uh, walkthrough, which was done in Ken's style. So I haven't been shy about, you know, copying Ken's style, but I really didn't like, I didn't really want to just uh, straight up copy his format without giving it my own little twist. And the little twist that I thought I could give it was to focus on retro PC games rather than uh, retro console games, which is primarily what Ken does. And this way, I thought this would be an easy way for me to, you know, do something a little bit different. And I immediately ran into huge problems with The, the Secret of Monkey Island because I chose that one because it just has such a good soundtrack. But immediately I realized, like, that rule about only using songs uh, which play during the gameplay parts didn't really work out so well. And as a result, I have tried to avoid, uh, avoid doing adventure game soundtracks since then because I discovered the problem with doing PC soundtracks is that the cutoff point to... PC games that have absolutely no music at all during gameplay, and then games having just way too much music, you know, that's a really sharp turn, and there's no, like, there was no easy, nice middle ground where you could get, like, you know, a soundtrack that maybe had, like, 10 songs to rank, or 8, or 12, or some, like, reasonable number. So, I've done 18, like, a couple of times now already. So, inevitably, because I didn't want it to be just a one-off, I eventually did Heroes of Might and Magic, but then, eventually, I started to realize, like, maybe I am going to have to tip my toe into the console realm, but I still didn't want it to be just NES games or just Super Nintendo games because I thought 
Again, that would be like stepping a little bit on Ken's turf a bit there. And if I'm just doing exactly the same thing as he's doing, uh, I felt like, well, that's just super lazy. I don't want to do that. And so, inevitably, I came to the realization that there were a couple of soundtracks which sound very different between the American and the PAL versions of the games. And this one of such example is Sonic the Hedgehog, the first one for the Mega Drive, because PAL version games very regularly suffered from a uh, slowdown unless the game developers had managed to do some technical tricks uh, in order to deal with that. And the first Sonic the Hedgehog, they didn't do that for the 50 hertz uh, PAL version, which is why the soundtrack and in fact the entire game of Sonic the Hedgehog plays noticeably slower in the European version. Now this is the version I grew up with and I have a lot of affection for this version. I personally prefer it over the NTSC version, so I thought, hey, that would be a really fun uh, unique twist that I could do for the soundtrack ranking of Sonic the Hedgehog was to just uh, do the PAL version. I immediately realized though that when talking about anything Sonic related you're always going to things always come back to Sonic 2 eventually so I thought well I can't just do the Sonic 1 soundtrack and then not do the Sonic 2 soundtrack but with the Sonic 2 soundtrack the, Sega had already fixed the PAL slow up problem which is why the European version of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 sounds and plays pretty much exactly the same as the NTSC version. But I felt compelled to do it anyway because I knew that people might actually bug me about doing it if I didn't. The other game that I also immediately started to think about, which was also unique, was um, was Mega Man 3, the Mega Drive version. Uh, specifically, um, the version which is in the Wily Wars collection. And the reason I picked number 3 was the fact that... Because while the original Mega Man 1 and 2 uh, soundtracks did have the slowdown in the PAL version, when the third game came out, Capcom had also uh, fixed the slowdown issue. And that's why the NES soundtrack uh, for Mega Man 3 actually does sound exactly like the NTSC version, or at least very close to it. But the Mega Drive version actually does have the slowdown still in Mega Man 3, so it gives it, again, a kind of a unique sound. The slower tempo makes a lot of the sound makes a lot of the music sound different. Now, the reason I inevitably, though, started taking those videos down was because, especially the Sonic 2 video, I was really unhappy with. And in fact, there were even a couple of pretty big mistakes. I actually called two of the levels, at least, by incorrect names because I misremembered them. But also, I really did start to feel like I was kind of ripping off uh, Aqualung and so I decided that I was going to dial it back and uh, try to put more personal picks into the soundtrack ranks going forward. That's why I did Mario 64 next, because Mario 64 is my favorite Mario game. So, and eventually I covered Larry 6, of course, which again brought it back to the PC thing. And to be fair, I do think the production values on these first, two, on these early ranking the soundtrack videos were you know, a little hit or miss. But now that I have done a few more of these more personal ranking the soundtrack videos, I have started to realize, like, I was maybe being a little overly critical of myself. That first Sonic PAL version video, I've actually started to think was actually pretty good. So I have decided to bring it back. Yes, the video capture quality on it is not the best, but that can be helped. I did a lot of hard work describing the soundtrack itself, and that, and the commentary side of it is still good enough in my view. So I decided, what the hell, let's bring it back. Now for the Mega Man 3 soundtrack, that one was a bit of a quick and dirty job. Literally, it is just the game audio, and that did bother me a little bit, which is one of the reasons why I went through such lengths to make the Larry 6 soundtrack clear of any game sound effects and things. But yeah, so now that I feel a lot better about the videos going forward, I have decided to finally re-upload these uh, soundtrack ranks for people to enjoy. And uh, that's really it. So I really hope you enjoy the soundtrack ranks. Uh, these are always really a lot of fun to do, even though they're a lot of work. Uh, it's really, the work really comes from finding the selection of songs that I want to feature more than anything else. But anyway, uh, this is Hunter the Hunter Mackinan and enjoy the soundtrack ranks.
Welcome to another Ranking the Soundtrack, and this time it's Sonic the Hedgehog. But specifically, it's the PAL version of Sonic the Hedgehog, which you will instantly notice because a lot of these tracks will sound a bit slower. The reason I'm doing the PAL version specifically is because this is the version that I grew up with. I've always personally preferred this one, but I will also point out the instances where I think the slower tempo maybe doesn't work so well with the music. As per the unofficial Aqualung rules of Ranking the Soundtrack, I will only be ranking the six main level themes. That means no final zone, no boss theme, no bonus level theme, and no title theme. So let's get on with it. At rank six, it's Labyrinth Zone. My least favorite level, so unsurprisingly, this one is pretty low. But I also have to say, the theme for Labyrinth Zone is probably one of the worst pieces of music from any Sonic game. It doesn't honestly sound like it should be in a Sonic game. It's, it's just so dumpy and stupid, and, and that banjo isn't doing it much favors. Okay, yeah, I'll admit that I maybe dislike this theme more because of the level it's in. But either way, I don't really get a hankering to listen to this song. At rank number 5, Scrap Rain Zone. The theme from the final zone in the game. And I think this theme is a victim of the fact that this is indeed the first Sonic the Hedgehog game. It just doesn't sound very much like Sonic music. Having said that, I do like it a lot more than the Labyrinth Zone theme. Especially the melodic parts, they sound very gloomy, and that's appropriate for the level it's in. But that's the other problem. I've never really liked Scrap Rain Zone. Now, I generally don't tend to like the final levels of most Sonic games anyway, but, but this one in particular has always felt very out of place. It actually feels more like a Mega Man level, if that makes sense. It is a pleasant piece of music, don't get me wrong, but just like Labyrinth Zone, it just, in my view it just doesn't fit a Sonic game very well. At rack number 4, it's Spring Yard Zone. Spring Yard Zone, of course, is the prototype for all the different casino and pinball themed levels in later Sonic games, and the same can kind of be said for this theme. Now, I do like the percussion on this one. It, it hits very hard and has a very warding impact to it. And I will admit that in the PAL version, the slower tempo maybe slightly robs it of its impact a little bit, but at the same time, I don't particularly like the melody parts of this one. Much like the level in which it plays, this still feels like a very rough early version of a Sonic Pinball level. A proto-casino night zone level. It's fine, and I certainly like it better than the first two songs, but still not excellent. At number three, Starlight Zone. This is by far my favorite theme from the entire game, which I probably didn't hear that much growing up, except maybe in the demo screens, because obviously as a kid I was never good enough to get past Labyrinth Zone. This is another theme that maybe suffers a little bit in the PAL version, because it's already pretty slow, but at the same time, it doesn't really ruin it. I still like listening to it a lot. It's a very romantic piece of music which is kind of funny. It's actually more romantic sounding than any of the themes in Rouge's stages in Sonic Adventure 2. It's nice pleasant vibe music. It fits the level really well. It maybe doesn't have the kick that I expect from a Sonic theme, which is the only reason I'm ranking it as third, but really this is one of the outstanding pieces of music. I like this better than most of the music in Sonic 2, if you can believe that. At rank number 2, Green Hill Zone. I don't think the Sonic team has ever managed to create a better level 1 theme than this one. Even though they've tried to copy this one multiple times in later games. You just I just instantly think of Sonic the Hedgehog when I listen to this. And yes, I do prefer the slower PAL version. I honestly think the NTSC version just sounds wrong because it plays so fast. The slower version, I can really appreciate the melody shift. It does have a lot of layering and build-up to it, which I really like. It was a tough call between this one and what ended up being the number one song, and there's really no good reason why this wouldn't be number one, but maybe I'm just slightly overly familiar with it. And at rank number one, it's Marble Zone. Now me and Ken have actually talked about how some PAL version songs actually sound way better in the slower PAL versions because they get a lot more melancholy, and Marble Zone is one such example. The faster version just kind of sounds like dance music, but the slower PAL version has a lot more gloom and doom in it, but also excellent melodic parts. This, this is easily one of my favorite Sonic level themes. And the second zone themes from most Sonic games tend to be my favorites. And this is no exception. It's such a sudden shift from the happy, cheery, green hill zone theme. And it gets me really driven to get away from the lava. So that was my ranking. Tell me what are your favorite themes from Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm Hunter the Hunter Mackin and see you on the next one. 
Welcome back to Ranking the Soundtrack, and this time it's Mega Man 3 for the Sega Mega Drive. This, of course, is the 16-bit remade version of Mega Man 3 for the NES on Sega's Mega Drive console. I feel compelled to again address that, this, that I'm ranking the soundtrack based on the PAL version of this game, because the North American NTSC version technically doesn't exist as a physical game at any rate. And yes, I am, of course, playing this off of, uh reproduction cartridge, because real Mega Man Wily Wars cartridges are extremely rare and expensive. The NTSC, or I guess the Genesis version of this game, was a Sega Channel game, which is why there's no physical copies of it, and Sega Channel didn't exist in Europe, which is why it's the only part of the world where this game was actually released on a physical media. Because no physical version of the game's NTSC version exists, I am not entirely sure if the difference in game speeds is really as dramatic as I've seen it in emulators. When the emulators try to play the game at NTSC, NTSC speed, it seems roughly equivalent to the NES version that I'm familiar with, because somewhat ironically Mega Man 3 on the NES was the first of the Mega Man games to not suffer from the slowdown in the PAL version. It's kind of a look at what Mega Man 3 could have been like if it had had the slow up. Just as with the Sonic soundtrack though, I will make notes where I think the PAL slowdown doesn't work for the songs, but also where I do think it does work for the songs. As per the unofficial Aqualung rules of ranking the soundtrack, I will only be focusing on actual level themes, so none of the stage select themes or victory themes, whatever. But I will also be excluding the castle themes from this ranking, mainly because I don't really care for the castle themes in most Mega Man games, with, with very few specific exceptions. So only the eight main level themes are getting ranked in this video. Now let's get on with it. It. At number 8, Needleman. My least favorite level, oh, of course this is my least favorite theme, and it also sounds the least different from the NES version. Now in that, it actually doesn't sound awful or anything, but there's nothing hugely surprising about it, which is kind of annoying. I guess the slower tempo makes it sound less noisy, but yeah, not, not a big fan of this one. At number 7, the Snake Man theme. Now this is one of two themes that I do think definitely suffer from the slowdown. I've always liked Snake Man's theme in the original game, I just love the gallop on it. It has a bit of a western feel to it, which unfortunately the slower PAL version loses. However, it still sounds pretty nice. It still has a little bit of that Snake Man flair to it. But yeah, this song maybe suffers the most from the slowdown overall. At number six, the Hard Man theme. Now this is another theme that I think suffers from the slowdown. Hard Man is actually one of my favorite themes from Mega Man 3. And in the slower PAL version, it really loses a lot of its punch, but it's also because I think it, they didn't use the best percussion sounds on the Mega Drive sound chip. It's weird because I would have imagined this song would have sounded awesome in a 16-bit rendition, and now it really doesn't. However, I still prefer the melody slightly over the Snake Man theme, so that's why I ranked it at number 6. At number 5, the Shadow Man theme. Now, now this is a theme that I actually think is improved in the Mega Drive version. It just sounds really cool. Kinda jazzy, almost. And I gotta be honest, the original 8-bit version isn't really one of my favorite pieces of music. Shadow Man's level, in general, is actually one of my least favorite levels. But yeah, no, this sounds really pleasant, and I really like listening to it. One of the things that actually sounds way better in the Mega Drive version. Number 4, the Gemini Man theme. Now I do like the Gemini Man theme in the original NES version as well. The Mega Drive version takes in a completely different direction. It sounds spooky as all hell. I actually do like it. Gemini Man has a very unique sounding stage theme. It, even in the original version it does sound kind of dire. And because of that it stands out amongst most Mega Man music. But I'm hesitant to say the Mega Drive version actually sounds better than the NES version. It definitely has a different vibe to it. Mostly because the percussion isn't as strong. I still prefer this over the Shadow Man theme, even though that one was, in my view, was really improved in the Mega Drive version. But having it in the top three was still asking a lot. Number three, Spark Man. This is the final of the tracks that I think really suffers from the slowdown. Although I listened to the speeded up version, I think they maybe didn't use the best possible sounds for it. The original NES version, Spark Man is my favorite stage theme, but here the slower tempo and I think the slightly less powerful sounds just lose the electric energy that 
was in the original. Even so, uh, it still has that recognizable Sparkman melody, and that and that still makes it better than the vast majority of themes in the soundtrack overall. Sparkman is also my favorite level, so obviously I'm gonna rank this very high, even if this is an inferior version. But yeah, it definitely loses a lot of the kick that was there in the 8-bit version, which is why it gets dropped down to rank number 3. At rank number 2, Magnet Man. Magnet Man, I think, is the first of the themes here that actually manages to marry the sound of the 8-bit version and the 16-bit version really well. Yes, it obviously plays a lot slower, but I have always really liked Magnet Man's theme. It's very pleasant, gets me pumped up. I wouldn't say Magnet Man has one of my favorite levels overall. This piece of music always gets me in a good mood, and I think the 16-bit rendition of it also works really well. And at number one, Top Man's theme. Not only do I think that the slowdown doesn't really hurt the Top Man theme, I think that they actually poured a lot of production quality into this one. There's a lot of sound layering in this one, which makes it sound really, really nice. And there's this constant clop with the tempo, which is really nice. I wouldn't say Top Man is my favorite piece of music, Music from Mega Man 3, but alongside Spark Man, Gemini Man, and Snake Man, it is easily one of the most recognizable pieces of music. I do think the 16 bit Mega Drive facelift actually made it sound really nice. Because of that, it deserves to go in the number one spot. So, that's my ranking. What do you think of the Mega Drive versions of the Mega Man 3 soundtracks? Leave your opinions in the comments. I'm Hunter the Hunter Mackin, and see you on the next one. Bye bye.